journalist Lars Ulrik Mortensen. I am musical director of the European Union Baroque Orchestra, also known as UBO. I am a harpsichord player by training. And uh, I would like to take the opportunity during this little series of podcasts that we are making here to meditate a little bit on continue playing on the harpsichord in its historical context, but also very much in its practical context, so as we like to see it done uh, within the European Union Baroque Orchestra, but also hopefully uh, giving a couple of guidelines or suggestions for you harpsichord players in generally. We shouldn't forget that as a harpsichord player, during our training, for instance, we spend hours, weeks, months, years practicing solo repertoire for the harpsichord. We play the Bach suites, we play Handel suites, we play Scarlatti sonatas, we play Couperin, Purcell, Rameau, uh, virginal music, anything, basically. But when it comes down to the practical situation in the everyday life of a harpsichord player, it's probably not a secret that 90% of what we harpsichord players get asked to do, being engaged for a concert or in other work context, is actually very rarely solo playing. But I would say, in my experience at least, or in my life, I have spent about 80% of my time not playing Scarlatti sonatas or the Goldberg variations, but being faced with a huge range of continuo jobs, continuo functions. And it seems to me that in this veil of tears that classical music life is today, um, we need as harpsichord players to give the right priority to continue playing, which is something then that I don't always feel in the pedagogical context that we get uh, asked or invited to do as much during our studies at musical institutions, conservatories, academies of music and so on. But I don't always feel that, 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 that the importance of a continual vocabulary and a control of the musical style uh, corresponds to the importance that it has in our practical life. During my activities as a harpsichord player, as a conductor, and as an occasional teacher, I come across a lot of very, very different approaches and styles of continuo playing among, not only among aspiring harpsichord players, but also uh, among uh, my professional colleagues. And it is not my intention or purpose to say that there is only one right way of doing things. It's the nature of continuo playing that it always involves a very important element of improvisation and responding to a musical situation spontaneously or indeed prepared. But there are certain basics in continuo playing that I very, very strongly believe in, not only for uh, musical reasons, we can discuss those and those are very often subjective, but also in terms of the historical source material to continue playing. We shouldn't forget that there are a lot of sources from the 17th and 18th century which tell us, sometimes in astoundingly great detail, what a contemporary musician then would have expected to do or would have seen as the major issues in continuo playing. And we can probably generalize by saying that at least continuo playing is not only the art of 
improvising a right hand to a baseline, which may be figured or not figured. Uh, but already there, uh, we have, I think, uh, sometimes some quite huge discrepancies between practice as documented and practice as we hear it today. Because one very important issue that is extremely clear from the contemporary source material is that continual playing is about playing chords. It's about playing more notes than one. <laughs> uh, and it is about playing a harmonic and rhythmic shape that backs up, that enhances the piece of music that we are playing. And already there, uh, I feel great differences between what many people seem to do today and um, the way that, personally, I uh, would like it to be practiced. For instance, this uh, little piece by Johann Sebastian Bach, it's the Gavotte, the last movement from the Cantata 202, Weichet nur betrübte Schatten, one of his wedding cantatas. I'm sure you know it. And so on. Um, if we look at the bass line, something I heard the other day was something like this. makes no sense at all. <laughs> uh, there are, there's no rhythm. The left hand is not articulated in any way approaching the way that the bass string instruments would formulate that. A lot of the chords are simply wrong because they do not fit with the harmonic framework that Bach composes, which we can see from the entire instrumental uh, parts, the, two, the oboe part, the two violin parts, and the viola, which of course presents a complete harmonic framework. Also, there was lots of parallels, lots of wrong voice leading, there was no arpeggio control, there was no rhythm, and basically, um, what I was trying to reproduce <laughs> was somebody not really having practiced this, but just sort of grabbing what he or she can uh, without too much preparation. That is unfortunately, to be quite honest, what I very often hear, even in professional terms. And I cannot strongly enough emphasize that I don't think that this approach is any way, is any way near what we should try to be achieving. So let me, in the next series of podcasts to be continued, go a little more into detail on everyone on these different elements or parameters of uh, continued playing, and let's see if we can find a more constructive and musically satisfying approach to this great and hugely satisfying subject in Baroque music.